You're watching News 12 High School Football Overtime, powered by Pioneer Metal Depot. Bradley Central has been ranked number one most of the year, but they still had a lot to play for in their regular season finale. The Bears battled Baird in for a region title with a special guest in the house. Vols coach Josh Heupel on hand to check out a couple of recruits, including the Bears Boo Carter. Bradley Central goes to Carter early, and he picks up a first down on this reception. Then quarterback Caleb Martin on the ground gets the touchdown. 6-0 Bradley after a short Bearden punt. Bradley takes advantage of the great field position. Martin is soon going on into the end zone again. 12 to nothing lead for Bradley. Bearden would respond with a quarterback rushing touchdown of their own. Drew Parrott with the honors to make it 12 to 7, but the Bears pulled away for a 46 to 14 victory. East Hamilton hosting Ray County 14-14 at the half, and it wouldn't stay tied for long. Hurricanes Jaden Haywood getting in the end zone to put East Ham up 21-14. Now it's time for Ray County to crank up their vaunted ground game. Mason Ford finds a hole, and he gets a first down. Caleb Carr with a stretch over the goal line. Ball is knocked away, but Carr had already crossed the plane for the touchdown, where it's tied at 21 again. Now we head to the fourth quarter and the very first play of the fourth quarter. Haywood makes the defender miss, then turns on the Jets, taking it 53 yards to the score, 28 to 21. But Ray County rallies for a 29 to 28 victory. Top ranked South Pittsburgh has dominated most of their opponents this season, and they're hoping to close out a regular season with another dominant win over Whitwell for another region title. And just like Michael Myers, they're hard to stop. A.J. Wallace takes the pass, and after giving the defender the slip, it's a foot race. Wallace takes it 57 yards to the house, 7-0 South Pittsburgh. Pirates' big play offense was just warming up. Next series, Caden Wellington breaks clear. Tigers, they're not going to get him. 65 yards for the rushing score, 13-0. Heading into the second quarter, it's 21-7 South Pitt. Wellington zips it over to Wallace for another touchdown to make it 28-7. Pirates attacking makes opponents sick for sure, and South Pitt wins 42-7. This week's News 12 Scholar Athlete takes us out to Cleveland High School for Micah Jordan. Scholar Athlete of the Week, sponsored by MSI Professional Services Group. Micah is not only a great athlete, but even better young man. He's respectable and makes great grades. He is the definition of a student athlete. He's played a great game against Bradley just a week ago, and he defines a student athlete. And if you know someone who should be nominated, make sure you send it a submission at WDEF.com. What a saga this year at Red Bank has been as the Lions are on their fifth quarterback. Yeah, you've heard that right. Five QBs, but the adversity hasn't slowed them down as they're still playing for a region championship. You know, Ted, I didn't know teams carried five quarterbacks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we, we drafted, we drafted pretty heavy in the quarterback field last year's draft. Yeah, the situation is so crazy. Coach Gatewood can't help but laugh. The quarterback dominoes started falling in week two for the Lions. We started the year with Eric Hill. He was going pretty good up until uh, probably second quarter against Ray County, and then he went down with a knee injury. We had uh, Sonny Daisy the following week. He was playing Sean Bruni, and Sean rolls out and gets tackled on the sideline breaks his collarbone. And after two more setbacks, Gatewood turned to freshman Caden Loveless to start in week 10. I mean, I was excited and nervous. I was nervous because I haven't played quarterback since seventh grade. Now, Loveless had worked with the QB sparingly in practice this year, but he played like a pro in his start against Hickson. About 16 of 23 for 170 yards passing. He's a special kid. He understands the game. He's got a really good football mind, and he's got great work ethic, and he's well-liked by his teammates. My family was excited. My mom, my mom is going to be my number one supporter. She was out there screaming my name. I heard, her, I heard her from the field, yeah. I love my mom. Gatewood hopes the quarterback carousel is over. You don't want that to happen to a kid specifically, but, he, you know, my colleagues in the business, it's like, golly, you know, most of them that I talk to can't believe we're, where we're at with it right now anyway. You know, our kids don't, don't hang anything on that. We just keep going. 
Now let's take a turn back in time and see a classic matchup featuring Cleveland and McCauley. Cleveland rallied for 14 points in the second half to turn back McCauley on Friday night, 21 to 16. Marwin Gash scored the first TD. He sent up the score on a 67-yard run, and with 113 off the clock, Cleveland led by a score of seven to nothing. McCauley stormed back later in the quarter as Les Connor will blast the 30 yards up the middle for the touchdown. McCauley later added a 35-yard field goal by Buff Grace and going into the locker room in intermission, it was 10-7 McCauley. In the second half, the Blue Tornado made mistakes. The first, a fumble recovered by Mark Gibson, and a few plays later, Stefan Scott will score, and it's 13-10 Cleveland. Following an interception on McCauley's next possession, Gash swept the left side for the score, making it 20-10. McCauley scored late, but Cleveland had the win 21-16. We, uh, we really came out with a lot of intensity the second half, especially defensively. We just kind of sat back in the first half, and, and uh, I was real proud of the kids the way they played. I... For News Center 12 Sports, I'm Chip Tarkington. I really enjoy when we get to take a step back and see those historical games.